He touches me, I toss his hand off. off. Touches me again. I toss his hand off. Touches me for the third time. I toss his hand off. And then he says, I toss his hand off. Hey family, a quick one. Over 87% of you are consuming this content every single week but are not subscribed. That means you are enjoying the growth conversations but you are not liking, you are not subscribing and you are not sharing it with others. So please, I plead with you, please subscribe so that you can share the love, you can share the growth and you can share this wonderful platform and wonderful safe space with others as well. Enjoy the episode. As we were talking, as as we as we were walking in here, um, you you mentioned about being tired from church. Yeah, so I was it, at church. Interesting. Mm -hmm. How does church come about into your life? Like, in Doyokti, that's the last thing that I would have thought that is a, a factor or something that plays a part in your life. Yeah. Are you big in church? Okay. I'm not an, an, an actual member mm -hmm. of the church, but yeah. when I say I'm going to church, yes. I go to Methodist. Okay, okay. Then I frequently visit other churches, but one church that I'd almost go to every day is Methodist. Every day? Okay. Uh, you mean every week? Every week. Okay, okay. Yeah. Is there something in particular about church that makes you keep wanting to go back? Um, <laughs> so I've realized, yeah. I, I don't know how, but I've realized that I like the worship songs. Okay. And the worship songs make me cry, mm -hmm. which I never really do in most cases. It's yeah. just, I'm a person who smiles a lot. Yeah. So You're a when, happy person. When there is a worship song playing, then I get to get to think about things that had happened in my life. Things you are going through. Things I'm going through, and then I can cry. So that is why I like church. It's a release. It is. It's an opportunity release. to release. And yeah. perhaps then, Musa, you are true to what church is about because church has been distorted in many ways. In many places, we see um, a, a, a church leaders being involved in wrong things, immoral things. We see, unfortunately, kids being molested in churches, people yeah. being a woman being abused in churches, men being embarrassed in churches, men being abused in churches. Um, but you're saying fundamentally what church was meant to be is a hospital for the human. Cast your burdens ne? unto him. Cast yes. your burdens unto him. And you've been able to do that with church. I have been. Ne? Why do you think then you go to different churches? Is it because there's different things you find in different churches? <sighs> Every church is different. Okay. Right? So I remember last week... I was in um, Apostle Church, mm -hmm. Apostolic Church, uh, because I like drums also. Okay. Like drums, they, they, they heal me. So if there's a drum, then I go to that church. If it's not a drum, just to experience the worship in that church. So I'd like visit, but every, every other day I met Methodist. Okay. That, that, that makes sense, um, uh, which is interesting. We'll come back to that because your life story has so many layers. Yeah. And for you to finally, after all these layers, come to a point where building a relationship with God is important for you, it's going to make sense. Yeah. Um, who is Musa? Where's Musa from? When I say who's Musa and where's Musa from, once again, that's a layered question, but just yeah, fundamentally, yeah. Where is Musa born and where does everything start? Uh, I was born in KZN, okay. a small town called Escort. Escort, yeah, <laughs> yes. Just right under Drunkenspeck Mountain. Yes, correct. Yeah, that's yeah. where I'm from. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And who are you born to? Are you born to a mom and dad that is married? Are you born to ish, a typical broken South African family like <laughs> most of us? Yeah, yeah, that one is difficult. 
So my my mom was married to someone. Yes. And then somehow got pregnant of me. Not with the husband's child? Yeah. Not. <laughs> so yeah, it's just that, but it's a great family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No complaints. Are you still in relationship with your mom? Very, yeah. You're close? We, we're very close. Yeah. At least after 2015, then we, we became very, very close. Because before 2015, I'd only see her like twice or once a year. Okay. And she'd only have my time when she's done with everybody else, like the old people, my grandfather, my grandmother, my aunts, and then my older siblings. Then after that, she'll come to me. And by then, I'm like, I don't need you, girl. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've been here for days. I couldn't even say things to you that I would have wanted to say. Correct. So, yeah, until 2015 then. After then, we really... You repaired the relationship, yeah. you'd say? I'd say. Yeah. Has she ever told you what was happening when you were younger, let's say age zero to ten, when you were still a child, and the family dynamic was that you're actually a child of outside of the of wedlock. Mm -hmm. What was the family dynamic then? Has she ever given you the picture of what was happening? Uh, no. Yeah. Because even the that story. She never really sat down with me to say, this is what is happening, or this is what had happened. Mm -hmm. I just came to know it by, I'd say chance, because she never sat down with me. Yeah. And it is a story that only broke down in 2009. How old were you then? At that time, I was 12, 13. Sure. That's like yeah, I was, early teenager. Uh, no, I was turning 14 okay. in that December, so I was 13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm guessing community rumor that you heard, something like that. Okay, so what happened is uh, she just told me that we are going to uh, Ladysmith. Okay. And then my aunt's visits. Mm -hmm. And then they probably thought I was outside, but mm -hmm. I was in the bedroom, so mm -hmm. I could hear everything what they that saying. they were saying. Yeah. And then they're just speaking in riddles. So I'm interested in hearing the story. Like, And then at some point, they speak about, do you think I'm ready to, 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 to know this? And then she's like, ah, she's old. He's old. He'll, he'll be fine. And then it just got stuck with me. Uguti, who are they talking about? Because it, it, like they're speaking in riddles. And the next day, we then left to Lady Smith. It was myself, her, and my grandmother. We got there, and then they started saying there were kids in the yard when we okay. got to, to Lady the house. Smith, yeah. yeah. And then they started saying, do you see that one looks like him? Do you see, do you see that one looks like me? Sure. Him. So I'm like busy connecting dots with, okay, what is happening? Mm -hmm. uh, and then they finally get to speak to the grandmother, my paternal grandmother. Uh, and then they chased me away okay. from the room. Okay. She didn't want to say things when I was in the room. Correct. But still, I was outside. So you could hear a bit? I could hear, not a bit, everything. everything. Oh, because yeah. So I heard the whole story, how yeah. they met, and whatever, whatever. Uh, but yeah, she, she never really sat down with me to say, yeah, this is the story, and then, and, nah. So that day was basically, you were being taken to your paternal family side at yes. 14 years old for the first time. Yes. You had never met your dad. Never. You didn't even know that you had a different dad compared to the man that your mother was married to. There were suspicions. Okay. Uh, because, like, my siblings, I have, like, three siblings. Right? Yeah. So all of them, they look alike, in a way. <laughs> yes. So much so that uh, there is an uncle who used to stay in our house. Because when mom is in Johannesburg, we are in my grandmother's house. Mm -hmm. And then someone else was staying in, our, in my mom's house. Mm -hmm. So that uncle, one day someone visited and... Then he called my siblings. He's like, come here. Um, and then he's asking the other guy, have you noticed how if you can make those ones laugh, they look so alike? Like, okay, so why am I singled out? 
Mm, mm, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. So I, I just never looked like my siblings, and so there was suspicion. Of it. Sure. Might, might not, but gay, yeah. Take me through high school. <laughs> high school, my high school was short lived. Okay. My high school was short lived, so I started in 2009. Yeah. 13, 14, somewhere yes, there. I was 14 in yeah. grade 8. Correct. Nkomu uh, was in technical high school. Okay. In case of that. so, was, that's in escorts? Yeah, yeah, it is in escorts. Okay. So, and then around March, my principal comes to school. Sorry, my class. He comes and he calls out six names. My name is in there. He's saying from the six, three will be assessed uh, for a scholarship in UK. Okay. I knew, and I know for a fact, everybody in my class knew that it was not going to be number one, I was going to be number two. Sure. So I was definitely in that list. And then just soon after that, I started getting feelings of, I want to leave, I want to leave. Uh, but before wanting to leave, it was just like, you are not needed here. You don't have a space. You don't have a place here. Yeah? Just, so... This is still grade 8? Yeah, it is still grade 8. March? And after March. Okay. So I started, like, um, attempting suicide. I did it, like, it was the pills, that medicine... I tried to knock myself with the car. So that's three. I tried three times. Three um, attempts of suicide. Three, three attempts of suicide. Failed. And then I'm like, okay, so I think I just have to go. Leave the house. I left. And me leaving, I walked. How much do you know, KZN? A lot. A lot. Yeah. So do you know the distance between... Uh, escort and Peter Maritz. My goodness, there's no way you walked that. That's I an hour. In, with a car. An hour with a car. Yes. It took me hours because when I left escort, was then I was at, at town. When I left, it was early, around half past seven ish, when kids were going to school. It was on a Monday. Which month? Which month is this? It was in May. Okay. So yes. five months into high school. Five months. You into have. High you have been singled out to go possibly to the UK for a scholarship yeah. because you're a star student. That's very important to yes. note. Yeah. That doesn't really work out, but you still have this persistent feeling that I don't belong. I don't love my life. Yeah. I feel rejected, possibly because of what is happening at home with you realizing, we would say, um, I'm probably not from this family. I don't feel like I belong in this family. I heard what I heard when I was taken to um, Ladysmith where I heard that I actually belong to that other family. So these, there's a multitude of emotions. It's still in your formative years. You're 14. It's the beginning of you being a teenager. Yeah. And now 7.30 in the morning on, in May, you say, let me walk to Peter Maritzburg from Escort. Can I, can I please take you back a sure. bit? It was not only that uh, the family dynamics okay. that made me to want to leave. Mm -hmm. I also just didn't feel in place in terms of sexuality. Okay. Yeah, so I... So you're discovering then my that side, my sexuality is different? Not then. It has been an ongoing thing. Okay. I just didn't understand it. Even okay. when I left, I still didn't understand what was going on. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just felt different. I'm like, okay, this is not... I'm not supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. On that Monday, around 7.30, I then started walking towards Moy River. And I got to Moy River, I'm hmm. like, I have to hitchhike here. It's May, it's cold, by the way, in that, part of, uh, in that part of KZN. It is. Yeah. So I have to hitchhike. Yeah. I tried hitchhiking, but now I'm thinking, I don't have money. So should one person take me from here, how am I going to pay? Like, okay, let me just walk. Probably when I walk, someone would see me a child that I am, I'm like, how oh, shame. Let me, Where are you going to? Let yeah. me take you to where you're going to. So I then started walking. I walked until I reached Peter Maritzburg. I think it was 
around five to six because it was getting dark at that time. Mm. Uh, and then I got myself a spot to sleep. I slept there. And what is a spot, Musa? <laughs> a spot it was just a space outside. <laughs> On the streets? <sighs> On the streets. Yeah. And funny that <laughs> to me I was the first... To me, I was the first person to sleep on the streets, from my experience. F- someone who is who is good in sanity, mm. um, because from where I come from, someone who sleeps outside or someone who has no space or a place to sleep is someone who's mentally disturbed. Yeah. And it was just my first time seeing that, okay, so someone like myself can actually sleep on the streets. Yeah. So it's just alone in my own world and, and stuff. So I was there for the whole week. Yeah. I I only ate sandwiches that I was given by some manager. I I stole chocolates yeah. in a shop. I'm forgetting was it um shop right or pick and pay spa. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Thank you. So I, I stole I was hungry. Yeah. This was now Tuesday. Remember yeah. I got here on Monday. Yeah. Then Tuesday I'm like I'm hungry. So what do I do? I went to the shop. I go to the shop I'm like so I should get some food. But I'm walking around the aisles, I'm like, ah chocolate, lunch bar, PS. This one I'm taking. I took a, I took them. Hit them, them in your pockets. clothes. Yes. Gandhi, a security guard or someone I do not know saw me. Mm -hmm. Because I could notice there was someone following me. And then, fast forward, I then got, (laughs) they handcuffed me. They then put me somewhere in the back. The manager came, he's like, I boy, you guys, this is a kid, you can't treat him like that. So he took me to his office and then he asked what's he asked what's going on. I just said, I'm hungry. I did not really tell the whole story. And then he gave me his lunch. His lunch was just sandwich. Hmm. Like just, just that I had. And then I did not eat until Monday when I was <laughs> I was in the hospital. So Sunday I I got sick. I drank a lot of water. I drank two liters of water in one go Mm -hmm. and I felt sick I was vomiting then some guy a security guard also called an ambulance then I was taken to is it Mm -hmm. Mm Dale hospital I was taken to that hospital some nurse noticed that this kid has been here so I was not admitted I was just taken to hospital they gave me some pills like okay you are fine you can go I had nowhere to go, so I just, just stayed. slept at the benches. And then some nurse noticed in the morning that this kid has been here since last night. He's still here, and there's no sign of him moving. Probably because it's no person, so she could see that this child is troubled. So then she comes to me. Babes, what's happening? I'm like, yeah, I'm waiting for my family. They're coming to fetch me. Mm. I go, okay. He goes, she goes, she comes back again. Hi, boy, your family is still not here. I'm like, no, she goes, she comes back again. They're not here. I'm like, okay, let me go call them. And I'm there on the, on the phone, uh, those uh, public phones. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, pretending. I'm pretending to be saying some things and I'm shouting, I'm pointing. Uh, and I'm just saying, she'll be convinced that I'm talking to someone. Sure. I got there. She's like, no, man. Come, let us go. And then she's taking me to other nurses now. The tiny, tiny room they were in. Uh, I think everyone in there was standing. So it was tiny. A whole lot of them and women. So I got there and now she's saying, this child is troubled. I have seen this child since last night. He's still here. And I don't know what's the problem. So because he doesn't want to tell me, I thought maybe you could tell you guys. Then <laughs> those nurses started saying, oh, shame. Oh, 
what's happening and he's so young and 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 so I, I just I thought I was missing my mother's love for a very long time so for a, a woman like person mm-hmm. to 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 show that they care like that, that level of affection made me tra- cry mm. I cried my eyes out. They're like, okay, we cannot help you here. Let us take you to the social worker because this is clearly too much. There's a lot going on. So they took me to the social worker. Social worker then used his ways to call my mom. I didn't want him to call. But he used his ways to call my mom. Then they sent my sister to come fetch me. But before my sister came, then gave me food. So I was almost like I'm admitted. I okay. was not sick at that time. So then I ate. And I had to take a bath. <laughs> I did not eat from Tuesday. That Tuesday when I ate sandwiches. I did not bath from Sunday. So it's just a mess. And then she came. She took me home. I stayed... June, July, until October. Mm -hmm. October, this thing came back again, says, no, man, what are you doing here? Just go. And then I left. What do you think the thing was? What what is that feeling? Can you explain that feeling, what it felt like? Is it a voice? Is it just a feeling? It was a a, a voice that was just talking to me. No, man. Do you think, do you really think this is a place where you're supposed to be? Because hmm. I'm, I'm feeling like I'm not like anybody. There's mm-hmm. no one to reference. Um, I do not feel like being with a girl in, mm-hmm. in, in, in a relationship sort of. And everything, everyone that I see around me, they have girlfriends and they have boyfriends. So... I just felt like I'm different in a way. And then there was this voice. However, my mom believes that this comes from me being selected to be able to go to um, UK for a scholarship. Okay. Which I can also say probably that was the reason I left home. Okay. Because... <sighs> It is just, just not enough for mm-hmm. me to say there's no one to reference. I feel alone. And, and, and it also could be the fact. But also this one, again, also could be the fact. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that voice came again. And then I left to Durban now. Because I saw, with my respect, there is no life. Mm-hmm. So I went mm-hmm. to Durban. I got to Durban. How did you travel to Durban? I... St- <laughs> I stole money from my grandmother. Sure. And then you took a taxi so, and went to Durban. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I got to Durban and then I met those guys. You're still 14? I'm still 14. Yeah. Just turning you... 15 in the next few months. Sure. So I met a guy. Mm-hmm. This guy is carrying milk and um, a snowball. We call it red cake as mm. a guy. So he's carrying that. I don't know, was he supposed to eat that or what? But he sees me. He's like, man, how are you? I'm like, I'm okay in yourself. He's like, cool. Are you sure you're okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. He's like, oh, okay. Why are you not at school? I'm like, ah, hey, something happened. I don't really remember what was my answer, but he did ask, why are you not at school? Like, have you not started smoking? I'm like, no. He's like, okay, do not smoke ever. I'm like, okay. And then he gives me this. Uh, so I'm still surprised to go to where is this guy coming from? It's like God sent because I really needed this, and he just comes. He handed that over to me. When I'm still surprised, I see two guys, two boys actually, running towards me from across the street, like they are running. And now when I see them and I notice that they are dirty as hell. Again, someone as dirty as that from where I come from is mentally disturbed. Disturbed. Yeah. And that person 
when they are running like that, you don't know what are they. They might to harm you to yeah, do when yeah. they, they get to you. So, and so I'm like, now I cannot outrun those guys because I can't run. Generally, mm -hmm. I can't. So even if I probably wanted to run, it's two guys against one person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd never outrun them. And I'm like, okay, so what do I do now? As they are approaching, now they are shouting, please give us, please give us. So I then imagine they're talking about food. This yeah. Food. So I just stretch out my hands. They took it and then they left. I continued work, walking. On my way walking, just a few steps after them, I'm like, but those boys don't seem really mentally disturbed. Mm -hmm. So what's wrong? Okay, so probably because they know the, the, the place, probably they can tell me where can I sleep mm -hmm. tonight. Because I think it was around two at that time. And then I went back to them. When I got to them, I didn't even have to say anything. Like, oh, you want this place to stay? I'm like, yeah. Like, what's happening? Mm. Like, yeah, just behind us. Everything was just here. Mm -hmm. Behind us, these um, containers, they're like, yeah, that is a center. So we'll take you there. You'll meet a social worker. You tell him a story. Doesn't have, a, <laughs> doesn't have to be a true story. Just tell him a story. And then if he takes you in, he will then try and get you a place of safety to mm -hmm. stay. Mm -hmm. And a place of safety, you're going to live like you're at home. Mm -hmm. Just that it's like many of you, like okay. you just like you're at home, you eat, you bath, you sleep, you then wake up probably in the morning, you go to school. So it's just like you're at home. Like, okay, that sounds like a great idea. Mm -hmm. Let's go there. We got there. Also, it's like this guy, the, the social worker guy was just waiting for me. We got there. He's like, oh, so you brought someone. Yes. Okay. How are you? I'm fine. Okay. What is your name? I tell him. Okay. Your story. I tell him the lie story and then he's like oh okay uh, and then he said okay you can just go sit with everybody else mm -hmm. and i went to sit so then it was nice you'd eat it was not eat eat because uh, slices of bread yeah with juice okay in the morning at the during the day and in the afternoon and then on weekends then there's like hot meal so where are you sleeping? What is this? Is it a, a shelter? It, it is a shelter. Okay. Yes. So I was sleeping there. I did not experience living in the streets or s sleeping in the streets after Peter Marit's special. Sure. Until 2011 when I went back. So almost two years. Almost two years. Yeah. But I did also go in 2010. Yes. Some social workers took me back home and they said excuse me they said we should not see you again in Durban okay I mean they drove all the way to escort, escort yeah like yeah we don't want to see you again in Durban mm -hmm. um during my stay in in Durban pre 20 2011 yes yes I was in the side of a point. Correct. That side. Yeah. So. The dangerous side. <laughs> which was not as dangerous when I think about Correct. it now. Correct. But it is. It is now. Yeah. So I was there and then I'd hear stories. You know, I am I'm, I'm a person who grew up. In, in a home where we we were a huge family in my grandmother's house. So like stories, these always stories. And some stories you listen to them like, ah, this one is a lie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, ah. mm -hmm. So I got the when I was in Durban now people are start start telling me stories. You guy, there is a man in the Durban station side of Durban who abuses boys. So when you are a boy and you are new on the streets, he will take you and then he will do as he pleases with you. If you resist whoever 
helped him to get you down and do as he pleases with you would come after him. Okay. If you are lucky, you'd get out of wherever that space is alive, and if you're not, you will die. And then they'll probably bury you somewhere. And some shallow grave. Some shallow grave. Yeah. It was just a story to mm-hmm. me. Like, Mythical ah, story. Yeah. It is a myth. I'm like, ah, this guy's, ah, there's nothing like that. Mm. So, and then, remember now, the um, social workers took me home. So now you're back home. Now I'm back home. This voice comes back again. Because they Man, go. And now, it's worse this time around because now I know I'm not going back to Point. Because I've exhausted my stay at Point. They told me to not come Come back back, together. And they know you there. They know me there. Yeah. So now I have to move to the um, Devon Station station side. And for the time that I spent in Devon, I already know there's nothing like the shelters in Point that side. Correct. So when you're that side, you're like a street kid, Mm -hmm. period. I knew that I was going to be a street kid when I left in 2011. But I think this was just telling me go, and I didn't care. So I left 2011. I then was introduced to some group of gay men who also live in the streets. So we just created a small family. We did not create. I joined the family because okay. they were there before me. Yeah. So I joined the family. We were fine. And there was. And there is a feeling of a bit of comfort because yes. now these gay, it's gay men. Yes. You feel accepted. And now I'm at home. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. This is where I. This, this is what the voice was telling me to go. This 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 is where I need to be. Sure. Not ideally so, mm-hmm. but I think this is better than home. Mm. And which surprises me because. When I hear stories of people saying things about their families being homophobic and stuff like that, uh, threatening them with death sometimes, cutting off money, Mm -hmm, supply, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and stuff like that, I'm like thinking, you know, those people probably want to have my problems, which was just a voice. Mm an unknown voice telling me to go. Because to them, it's a reality. Someone tells you, should you, should I find out that you're gay, I'll kill you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, hey, guys. <sighs> okay, so I'm now with this gay man. Your I family. at home, the family now. Yeah. It is nice. We wake up, we go... We go collect like uh, the white paper and boxes. We come and sell. When we come and sell, there is this guy. His name is Pat. Mm -hmm. Pat doesn't go anywhere. He doesn't hustle. He's just there at the corner. Uh, I wanted to actually say where the corner is, but uh, Mm. I think it's just big. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he's always there. So he wakes up and sits there. He wakes up. He sits there. We wake up early around 3, 4. To, co- to collect to paper. Collect for recycling so recycling. you can sell them and get money. Yes. Yes. What made money those days were papers. Correct. Like white paper and yeah. boxes. Okay. So this is what we were dealing with. And then when you come back, Pet will ask you, can you borrow me money? And then you give him. But he's never going to pay it back. Oh, yeah. All right. And you can't also expect him to pay it back because Pat doesn't wake up like he doesn't anybody hustle. else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't. And if you did not give Pat money, probably you said, ah, I don't have money. Someone is going to come and convince you to give Pat money hmm. and make it sound like... You're a bad person. You're a bad person. Yeah, you're, you're not, not helpful. Give. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I did not understand all that thing. And and Pat was just a giant, he's, he's huge, and he's scary. Mm-hmm, <laughs> also, mm-hmm. he's dark in complexion, mm-hmm. so you can imagine, it's like scary. Was he of South African origin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He's a South African. Maybe not. <laughs> when you look back. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah. 
I, because him and I were not really friends. Okay. We're like, I think I hated him because yeah. of that thing of him just taking our money. Sure, so, and not working for it. You know? yeah. So we're not good friends, him and I, so we never really had conversations. <sighs> Maybe he was not really of, but let us just say he was. So he's, he's that person and he's known that you cannot touch pets. Mm -hmm. Okay. I then join Muslim faith. In the midst of that, I joined Muslim faith. And then they take me to a Muslim school mm -hmm. just to study basics. And then when we were there, found someone who said, no, man, you can actually, because you are saying you, you, you do not have, like, the official education. Yeah. Because this one can help you in Islam. But you still have to go out there and work and stuff like that. And you need now, like, yes. the real education. Yeah. So there's a school I know in Pretoria where you can do both. I think you should go there. Like, okay, I think that sounds like a great idea. So I went to Pretoria. My first day in Pretoria was the 1st of August in 2011. Mm -hmm. And I studied, we studied Arabic. Now... The unfortunate part is that when we got there, it was three of us. When we got there, it is no longer the school that he knows. They're only now teaching Islam. They're teaching in Arabic. It, it, it's a school school, mm -hmm. but not the school that we know. Okay. They teach you how to write, how to read, um, and stories, and, and it's like school, but it's all Arabic. Okay. And then one nice thing is that, so they would write tests every month. It is tests. And I passed those tests like first month. No, it was a surprise because we're learning Arabic, something new. Something and completely new. Yeah, yeah. You, you, when, when you're writing, you can't write in, in English saying, I'm trying to write in Arabic. You have to answer whatever that you're answering. It in should Arabic. be in Arabic and yeah, stuff. Yeah. It was a surprise. And also, at the end of the year, I also passed. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was not, I did not pass in higher grades, but I passed. And I got um, a token of appreciation because they said the, the, the amount of time that you spent here and your marks... <laughs> There's something there. Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. You you have passed more than people have been here since the whole January. year. Yeah, yeah. So it was just a great mm -hmm. stuff. And then I went home in December. Home as an escort. Escort. Yeah, so you still have access to home. I have. Okay. Uh, I go back home and escort, and I decide I'm not going back there to that Islamic school. Mm -hmm. I don't really think I even want to be a Muslim mm -hmm. because at that time it was just a thing of a moment, like that hype of a moment was, yeah, so I have joined this religion, now I'm studying, and then and so in December I'm like, ah, man, mm -hmm. this is not what I want to do. So 2012, I was at home, actually I was in, in, in Johannesburg, the better half of, of 2012. I think I left here in July, August. And when I got home, the voice came back. And now I had to plan that I am going on the 2nd of November. I am going and I'm going for good. I'm not coming back. Mm -hmm. because 2012, 2nd of November. Yes. Yeah. Because before 2012, I've been going and coming back, going and coming back. So I'm like, now I'm not going back anymore. I'm living for good. Fourth time. Yeah. The fourth time. And I left on the 2nd of November. I left. I got to Durban. I met with my friends. We went to... <laughs> there, is, there was a, a, a gay club in Durban called um, Angelos. Mm -hmm. so there was a vibe around those days. So we went there. We spent the night there. And then... Back to reality on the 3rd of November. 
back to reality and now I'm learning that Pat had died. He was stabbed. There's like, I think they said three guys mm -hmm. came and just out of the blue, they stabbed uh, Pat to death. Mm -hmm. It is still like, oh, Pat died. Oh, shit, I'm sorry. Mm. Okay, fine. Because I did not understand the importance of Pat's presence in our lives. Okay. Uh, so now I go back to where these guys stay. And there's a lot of changes because before it was just us. Mm -hmm. Now everyone who wants to be there is there. Is able to come in. Yeah. Is people, it a shelter? Is it still on the street? It's still on the street, okay. but it's just a little corner. Yeah. Um, just before the gravy rest course. Okay. When you're coming from town. Sure. They. And now there's like everyone is here. Girls are here. Straight boys are here. And then and I'm like, okay. Things have changed. And now they are telling me, ah, things have changed. It's pets died. I there's a lot of changes happening around here. So yeah. You just have to adapt. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And then I think probably a few days after that, I noticed that there's these two boys who are making good friends mm -hmm. with me. Uh, they're like my best, best friends. Mm -hmm. But also, they do not identify as homosexual men. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, this is surprising. That's, but that they heterosexual are being, men, yeah. yeah. But they are being nice. Yes. So, yeah, I, I, I can't really... Yeah, let me go with the flow. Yeah. So I went with the flow. So those guys are my friends. We're fine. That's one day in the morning. I'm sitting with the other friend, Umam Joacha. We are sitting just a little bit further from everybody else. Um, and then now we notice that there at the corner, there's a few, pe few people that came. With those few people that came, there's one person who looks a little bit older than everybody else and is sitting on top of a danger box. He's elevated from everybody else. It is a scene that is, is questionable. Okay, who is that one now? Because mm. I'm seeing that guy for the first time, and now he's trying to act all bossy. Mm -hmm. Who is that? Like, okay, let me just forget about it. So we continue talking. And at some point, Mam Joha is, is asking me, um, do you know some Nyam? I got scared. Mm -hmm. Because I remember, I know the, the story the from name, like three years ago. And yeah. I know the stories from yeah. three years ago. And I'm scared of two things. I'm scared that it might be um, him. him. It, actually, it might be a real story. Okay. Number two, he might be telling me because I'm a person who feels for people. So... I was scared that he might be telling me that there's like more stories that had happened and a few people died yeah, or whatever. Yeah, after so you like, left, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I want to hear those stories. And then I'm like, and then with me just thinking, trying to process all this, he's asking, do you know him? I'm like, yeah, I know him, but we have never met. I just know his stories. It's like, oh, okay. Do you see that guy there? The one that is elevated? Mm -hmm. That is him. Okay? That's him. He's like, yes. Like, okay. What do I do? Mm -hmm. Because now I understand that it is a reality mm -hmm. happening. And like, there is nothing you can do. One thing that you can, ex one way that you can escape him is going home. Hmm. <laughs> And remember, this is just at least two weeks after I had left home. And you've told yourself that I'll never, ever go back exactly. there. Exactly. Sure. And also, even if I did not tell myself that I'm yeah. never going back there. The voice told you also. I do not have money mm -hmm. to go mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So there's just no way I'm going Options home. Options don't exist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, man, that one, Ish, that one doesn't. It's like, you can run, but this guy has got ears, eyes, and hands everywhere in the whole city the whole city there is no way you can go and he cannot get you sure okay also that one sounded like what is he saying 
but I'm like, okay, let me just get up and, 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 and run. I got up, I'm thinking of running, but I'm thinking it would look suspicious when I run. Mm-hmm. So let me just walk. I walk. A few steps of me walking to, to, to really tell that these people were there for me. They were scouting me. Mm-hmm. Because I just got up. A few steps ahead, they started uh, shouting, hey, hey, hey. I'm like, okay, my name is not hey. <laughs> I have a defense. Mm. Even if they come and they catch me, why are you not responding? I'm like, my name is not hey, so I did not know you're talking to me. And then after some time, they start calling my name now. I'm like, okay, there is no escape. Let me go back. I go back. Now, I have not seen this guy, like, like really close. I only saw him from afar. I could see that it's an old guy. He's also dark in complexion. Just, ah. But now I am getting to see him very much close. Mm-hmm. And looking at him, he looks like a decent dad. Like Obaba. And now I'm thinking of the stories that I heard of him. Sure. And I'm trying to put the, the face and the name. Like, ah, this doesn't look like the guy. Because he looks decent. He looks very decent. Yeah. Because when they told you stories, like, he's a very scary person. He he has got power over mm. most of the things that side of town. He is, he is. A lot of stories about him. And then when you look at him, like, oh, but this one. Mm. I, and then I get there, like, Sao Bona Baba. Hi, how are you? I'm okay. And yourself? Okay, cool. Who are you? Hi, my name is, I'm from Escort. Oh, okay. Don't you want to go home? Like, okay, good. That is giving me an escape. Mm. Yes, I want to go home. <laughs> uh, and so he's like, okay, if you do want to go home and you're serious about it, I can help you, give you money to start a business. Your business will be selling like sweets and cigarettes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For you to get money then to go home. Okay, cool. That really sounds, it's not ideal, but it's still fine. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, cool. And then he further then says, You know, you are still new here. You have not started smoking. The streets are dangerous. I don't want you staying here. I live in a house. Come stay with me. Now I'm thinking, this guy, with all the stories I've heard of him... But he's being so nice to me. It's the opposite. It's it's the total opposite. Correct. Okay. But also now I remember that he's possibly here for me. Mm -hmm. So I say yes, I say no, it doesn't matter. But also the opportunity of living in a house. Living in a house. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can go live in your house. I'm like, okay, cool. And then he he then says, I'll come fetch you tonight around seven ish when I knock off. He worked in in Deben Station. So he, 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 he then leaves. I notice that when he leaves, he's with three boys. Now I understand it was his bodyguards. Okay. He doesn't go anywhere alone. Mm-hmm. So probably that is why he's so mighty and powerful because he doesn't have to do anything. Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. you want to fight him, you start with the boys and then him. So you can't win anyway. So they, they go. On them going, I then now start asking people, guys, what do I do? Because... Now it seems like today is my day, so what do I do? One is saying, no, man, just get yourself a wig, get yourself some high heels, some dress, and if you can, put on a makeup. He doesn't like girls. He likes boys. So if you are a girl like... You will be disinterested. (sighs) Yeah. Sure. Okay, that sounds like a great idea, but the money now to buy those things. Okay, yeah. I do not have money. Okay, so, okay. Scrap that falls that away, one. yeah. And then another one is saying, no, man, what you can do is not sleep in one place every day. Today you sleep here, tomorrow you sleep there, and then another day you sleep there, and, 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 and. So you wouldn't be able to find mm-hmm, you, mm-hmm. okay? I think 
from the three suggestions, better this plan. one yeah, is yeah, the yeah. better one. Like, okay, I'm going with this one. And my friends are still here. Those two boys are still here. Uh, with all those consultations, they're still here. And then I then decide that I'm going to sleep at Gray Street. And then night time comes, we go to Gray Street, we lay our blankets, and then we just sit. Because we just normally would talk, share stories and stuff before everybody falls asleep. So it is that time. And then this guy says, let me take you to Guambazo. Like, Guambazo, where is that? It's like, it's another place, it's hidden, he won't find you there. Like, oh, okay. So now, he's like, yeah, let us go now. And then this one decided, like, no, man, do you know where that place is? I'm like, I don't. He's like, that's exactly where that guy stays. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay, so what is happening? And then they laugh. Both of them laugh. <sighs> okay. And then this one is saying, okay, let me take you to a place I know. Guamnyamandao. There it is dark. No one can see anyone because it's dark. Uh, because now you know your spot where you sleep. So you'll be able to see where you sleep. But for someone else who doesn't sleep there, they wouldn't be able to see you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, okay, that really sounds like a great idea. <laughs> and this one decides, like, do you know where that is? I'm like, I don't. Like, that's exactly where this guy stays. So now you're confused. <laughs> so my two, because they're now my best friends. Mm, mm, mm. These are the people I'm always with. I'm going to the toilets. They're here. I'm going to eat. They're here. I'm like. So where do you eventually go? Sorry? Where do you eventually choose to go? I didn't. I didn't get to choose. Okay. Because we're still trying to choose. Good. Okay. I'm just like confused. Yeah. What are these guys doing? In my confusion, I then see people having their eyes fixed across the road. You know, where there's like a fight and you see people they're like gawking that side. So I follow those eyes. When I check, it's him with the three guys. They're carrying sticks and they're tapping them on the hand like that. From where I come from and actually from school, when the teacher is about to give you a, a good hiding, hiding, she first does that. It's that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know from them coming, was okay, today we're in for a big one. Mm -hmm. So I saw them coming, doing that. I'm like, okay. But also now, how did they find me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I get up, I go to them. As I'm saying, I don't want drum. Was with them sticking their sticks like that, I'm like drama, drama going on here. So I go to them. Okay, are you here for me? I'm like yeah, yeah, yeah. We came to fetch you. Okay, let's go. Like, no, but you have to take your things first. I'm like okay, cool. I take a few of my clothes. Like trying to take blankets. Like no, you don't need blankets. Let's go. I'm like okay, cool. We go. Us going, I noticed my friends are going with us. Like, good. I have defense. Okay. <laughs> I also have bodyguards good. in this situation. Good. Probably just waiting for me to act and then they help. Mm -hmm. So now probably I'm just thinking, when am I going to act? What am I going to do? How do I escape? And then we go to a corner and then there's a passage like dark one we go in there he's in front of us the somyama guy and then it's everybody every one of us behind him and then he goes into a building when we get close to that building i'm like i i'm not going in there because that looks like the last person who stayed there was in 1920 sure it looks old, it looks damaged, mm -hmm, it's like mm -hmm. there's garbage everywhere. And I go, okay, should I go in here? I'm not coming back alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. You will become part of the damage. Yeah. Yeah. So, now, because I've been believing that my friends are probably just waiting for me to act. 
Let me act. Now it is my time to act. Mm -hmm. I'm not going back inside the... <laughs> and I start resisting. Like, no, man, let us just go in. I resist like this. Then, I pick me up. <sighs> Have you seen someone who, who has fainted? Mm -hmm. How they pick them up? Mm -hmm. Like, one person here, one person yes, there. Yes, yes, yes. Another yes, one the leg, yes, yes, and then yes. the head. It was that. In that thing happening... My friends are there. A part of the. I like I So, buningik, it is a lot. Yeah. Okay. They carry me through to the steps. Probably they didn't realize we cannot carry him all the way up the steps. They just let me down and then they just drag me. I drag me up the stairs. And then on our left, there is a small room here. We go into that room. He's already there, so Nyam sitting. And then there's a chair somewhere there. So they say, you can sit there. I'm like, okay, cool. I went, I sat there. And I was just thinking, what is happening? There's a lot to think about. My friends are betraying me. Mm -hmm. Because these are now people that I thought were my best friends. Sure. I'm also thinking, trying to connect dots with what they were saying to me earlier mm -hmm. when they were saying, let us take you to this place, mm -hmm. Gandhi. It is actually where this guy stays. Mm -hmm. like, and then sometime later, they come with food. They have cooked. I don't know where did they cook. <laughs> they come and they say, should we dish up for you? I'm like, no, I'm fine. As if that was going to help me. So I said, no, I'm fine. Like, okay, cool. They dish up for themselves. And also my friends are being dished up. It's almost like they're used to this place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm looking at it and I'm like, this is a movie. Uh, so they eat. They're done eating. At some point, they start now making the bed for this guy. So he has a mattress like. And then they put on some sheets for him. He's, he's a king mm -hmm, in that mm -hmm. castle. So, and then he sleeps. And then he says, you are going to sleep here with me. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, and then he says, don't you want to come sleep now? I'm like, no, I'm fine. I'm not sleeping. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then everybody else now sleeps. And then he says, you are now the only person who's up, so you are not, you're not giving us rest. Mm -hmm. Come and sleep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now his his voice, his tone of voice was has changed. It's firmer, was, stronger. Was was, was strong. It was, it's like assertive now, because at first it was just come and sleep. It was an invite. Now it is an assertive voice to. That sounds almost scary. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, now you should understand. Excuse me. So, I'm wearing two jeans. <laughs> I'm thinking that I was going to rescue me. So, I'm wearing two jeans. I go and I'm trying to sleep. He's like, no. No one sleeps with clothes on here. We sleep naked in this house. Okay. I then take off those jeans. I sleep. And as I am sleeping, I am thinking, because there's a lot to think about. I've heard a lot of stories about this guy. From the stories that I hear, that he's a gruesome person. The person that I met is not the person that I thought I knew. Okay, I did get into this house in some force, but is there really something that is going to happen here? Or we just, it's just really helping me. As I said, he was going to help me mm. stay in his house. Is it really helping me? Or the stories that I've heard about him are actually my reality today. Mm. So I'm just sleeping and I'm thinking, okay, what is going to happen? And if anything is going to happen, when is it going to happen? Is it when I'm asleep and they can see that I'm sleeping? Because I'm a crazy sleeper. When I sleep, I sleep, I, I, I sleep. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, when I'm sleeping or what? 
I'm just thinking. On me thinking, those two guys, my friends, are arguing. One is saying, it's me first. And another one, no, it's me first. No, yeah, it's me first. No, it's me first. No, it's me first. No, it's me first. So as much as it, it is disturbing me, their conversation, it is also disturbing. So miam. And then he asks, what are you guys talking about? Like, And one says, so it is me right after you. And then he's like, I man, just sleep. Shut up and sleep. I'm like, it is me after you. I, okay, probably they're not talking about me or anything. They was just forget about it. And then we go back to being quiet. A few minutes later, then starts touching me. I'm like, okay. So this is my reality tonight. Mm. Okay. He touches me, I toss his hand off. off. He touches me again. I toss his hand off. He touches me for the third time. I toss his hand off. And then he says, It was almost as if these guys were ready for him to say something. Mm -hmm. Because he did not even swallow that. They were here already trying to press me down. It was just swift. It was very fast. And trying to, because how I'm sleeping now, I'm facing up. They're trying to pull me to face down. I'm busy resisting. At some point, they managed to get me to face down. I'm facing down, but I'm still resisting. One of them takes a knife, starts pricking me. Stop being stubborn. We are going to hurt you. Stop being stubborn. We are going to hurt you. And I'm like, this guy is pricking me right now. So what happens when he actually decides to stab, stab. me? Hmm. Because right now, there's two things. Either I'm going out of here alive or dead. So I think my death should not be because he stabbed me. Yeah. So Let I then give in. just gave in. I gave in. Okay. I gave in. He came in. Uh, those palms and <laughs> yeah and then after some time he gets off I could hear someone second person getting on and then I do not remember when did I sleep at some point I slept and I wake up in the morning around seven to eight and it has been an argument that did i sleep because i felt asleep <laughs> or i died a little <laughs> because i'm telling you the last thing i remember was now noticing that it is the second person coming in and then after that I don't really know what happened. But I know the for the fact that it is all six of them that came in because that is a story I know. If you resist, whoever is going to help in getting you down, after him, it is all of those guys. So I woke up in the morning. I am not okay. Uh, and I, I, I feel pain. A little bit. So and then they ask, oh, so you are up? I'm like, yeah, okay. We have made porridge. Do you want to eat? I'm like, no, I'm fine. Okay. Do you want to stay here or you want to go back to your friend? I'm like, going back to my friends. And like, okay, you can go. <laughs> I go. And 
because this thing does not surprise anyone. It is something that happens every now and then. So people already knew what happened to, you. to me last night. Nobody asked me anything. So it was just... Okay. Life goes on. Life goes on. But it was not life goes on for me. Because I was bleeding. I I was bleeding for at least about two weeks. <laughs> yeah. So I was bleeding and then at some point I had to go to the clinic. They gave me some medication. I took those medication and after some time I was fine with the bleeding. But now I noticed that I, I don't know why would I be touching myself down there, but I I usually normally just touch. After a few days, I noticed that <laughs> there is a difference. So I'm now feeling some bumps. Mm -hmm. It's like some, what do you call? But there's an infection. You can feel that there's something different. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then, <laughs> yeah. So, there is just that. And few, 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 few. I think about a week or two weeks from that day. Because I'm, I'm just like thinking that the guy I saw that morning mm -hmm. when he came to, to say to me, I can help you go back home. Uh, no, man, you don't have to sleep here. Come stay with me at my house. And the guy that I experienced last that night is not the same person. Hmm. And in me, I, I, I want to to have him come to me and say, no, man, what happened was a mistake. Mm. Maybe I was drunk. Maybe I was demon-possessed or... I don't know. I just... I wanted him to say something and, and, and to say it was not intentional. It just happened probably. I don't know how. So I was praying that I just wish this guy comes and, and say... Uh, no, man, I'm sorry. It was also now, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares. It is life as usual for everyone. And I'm here, I am bleeding. And when I say I'm bleeding, I couldn't control myself. Hmm. I, what do I say? I, maybe I almost couldn't control myself mm. because... When I feel like going to the toilet now, I have to go now. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I really have to go now. Unlike in an in, in, in everyday thing when you feel like, I want to go to the toilet, but you can like, ah, maybe I can give it like 30 minutes or something. Doesn't this instance make you want to leave living here? Like, okay, let me try go back home now. E even if I steal money, doesn't it make you want to leave? How do I go back home? I don't think I even thought of that. I, I do not remember even thinking of going home because even if I wanted to think of going home, how do I go home? Yeah. There is no means. So, yeah. When I go to the toilet, nothing comes out but the blood. Mm -hmm. Nothing comes out but the blood for two weeks. And then soon after that, he comes back because I've been praying. Like, I want this guy to come back and, mm -hmm. and say it was a mistake. He comes and then he stands right in front of me and he taps my, my feet. Like, hi, I'm here for you. What do you want from me? I'm like, no, man. Uh, I wanted to talk to you. Probably apologize. 
but with all those people here we can't talk we can't talk so come with me again come with me to a private space so that i can apologize yeah and i'm like jesus christ not again not even not again Mm -hmm. i'm saying jesus christ you have answered my prayers wow yeah because now this guy is here and he's saying his 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 acknowledging his mistake acknowledging his mistake and he wants to apologize Mm -hmm. and one thing i want to hear is and i'm sorry him saying with his mouth i am sorry and probably then give whatever justification that he was going to give but i wanted to hear him say I am sorry. Like, Jesus Christ, you have answered my prayers. I got up there and there. I followed him. Again, he's walking way ahead of me. I'm walking behind him. But now, the guys are way behind me. So we go. I'm like, this guy is like walking very fast. And I'm trying to run because I'm like, I want to hear you say that you're sorry. (laughs) <laughs> and then at some point he goes into a building I see this building okay I don't remember seeing this building before um, so I go in I follow him and then when we are at the top of this thing that, that floor it is the first floor when we are at the first floor I now can see no man this is the same place just because a different I can route. See this room now. <laughs> Coming there the first day, we used the back side of the uh, the back entrance, which is like terrible. When you look at it, it's like no, you can't go in there. The front side looks great. It's nothing like the back side. So not like. Okay, it's probably not the same place. But when I get up there, I'm like, no, man, this is the same place. I have that in my mind, but I'm like, I still want to hear him say mm. sorry. I get in, the chair is still there, so now I understand that probably that's my chair. I go and sit on the chair. Excuse me. Go and sit on the chair and he says... <laughs> What we did that night was great. And the reason you are here is not for me to apologize to you, (laughs) but for us to do what we did again. So we can do it the easy way, or we can do it the tough way. And also, if we do it fast, fast, you also have time and a chance to go back to your friends fast, fast. I'm like, okay. Do I have a choice? No. I don't. I'm like, okay. Whatever happens. Whatever happened. And then I went back to my friends. And that was the last time him talking to me even. I do not remember us greeting each other when we met. So he was on to his next victim. He was done with you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was on to his next victim. How how much longer did you stay there? So this was in 2012, in December, probably. I stayed there 2013, 2014. I only left Deben in 2015. To go to? Here in Joburg. Please don't tell me you came to live in the streets in Joburg. No. No. So, okay. So, between 2012 and 2015, uh, I then joined a church. When we went to that church, we actually went there to eat. They were dishing up. We got to the church. It was a beautiful service. I'm like, okay. Even if there is no food, I'm coming back to this church. It feels nice. Because previously I've been to, like, white people's church. And it didn't feel the same. It it, it felt the same. Mm-hmm. And I think I missed the vibe. Okay. I just didn't know how to get to one church. 
So I got them like, okay, it's almost the same. Not same, same, because those churches I've been to before were like huge. There is like a band, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, people, a yeah. choir singing, and it's like huge churches. But with this one, it's like probably about 20, 30 people fellowshipping there. A small scale, but now songs were the same. So I got attached to this church and then they started dishing up again. When they started dishing up, I was then the person who was carrying keys for the storeroom. So okay. they trusted me with the keys to the storeroom until some white boys came. <laughs> they took the keys from me. They gave them to the mm. white boys. And then at some point they gave it back to me. Fine. But in the midst of that, I was then introduced to the Williams family. And the Williams family were from Deppen North in Roseneth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Deppen North in Roseneth. Um, at first they took my friend Osipo to go stay with them. It was Osipo is, is a very active person. He's washing dishes, he's doing, he's everywhere, he's there, he's there. So I guess that was his charisma. So they took him to stay with, and then he stayed with them. Uh, later on, how much time do we have? Uh, not that much, but let's get there. Let's get because I want I want you to take me to the Joburg part. How you got to Joburg? To Joburg part. Yeah. Was okay. it because of this family? Uh, partly. Okay. I wanted to tell a story of how I then got to stay with them, but it's almost a, 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 a long story. Yeah, yeah. So it's just yeah. I then let's, went let's to jump, stay with them. Okay, let's jump to Joburg. Jumped. Um, why do you get to Joburg in 2015? Why do I get to Joburg? So I got a job. Okay. The Williams family hooked me up with a job yeah. at Clover Dairies okay. in Park Town. Pine Town, not Park Town. Mm -hmm. In Pine Town, and I work there. Working there, I got myself a shack at Emaus. E mm -hmm. Yeah, I got my shack myself a shack at Emaus. I stayed there, and then I thought I had a reason to have my mom visit to see where I stay, so that she's she's less worried about me mm -hmm. because we've had communications ever since. So I'm like. So that she'll be less worried about me, let her, let her see where I stay. So I invited her, she came with my sister, they saw where I stay, and we had a great two days together. They left the next day. And then I think after that, probably that's when we started like being closer to mm -hmm. each other. And then we would like call almost every now and then. And then at some point I lost my job at Clover and then she said to me, no, man, uh, just come to Johannesburg. I know I do not have much myself. But we'll see what but we do. we'll see what we yeah. do. Let us struggle together. So, yeah. That's how it happened. And that's how I came to There's a part of your life that uh, not many know, because I want to juxtapose that part of your life as we are nearing the end of our conversation, is do you think it happened out of love? Do you think it happened out of desperation because you needed money? Um, or do you not, you actually don't know the reason then you then ventured into adult entertainment? <laughs> wow, okay. Um, really, it was a need of money. Yeah. Uh, because. Thank you for your honesty, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it was a need of money. I, ca yeah. I can't lie about that. Yeah. Because anyway... You had no job? You had... I had a job. I had a job. I had a job, but I had many debts. Okay. I don't even want to try and justify why, but I had many debts. And I remember at some point I would be left with just 1,000 rands from my salary to do whatever. But it was less, not enough. Mm -hmm. So I then... Oh, I'm not wearing it. I 
did a lot of things. When I was in Deben, some guy taught me how to weave using paracord. Mm -hmm. So then I made wrist watches and wrist um, bracelets. Bracelets. Uh, I tried selling that. Subsequently, didn't work. Mm -hmm. And then I tried selling perfumes. Didn't really work. Uh, I tried Herbal Life. I tried a lot of things. And then when I was like, okay, there's nothing for me to do. This adult thing came came mm -hmm. to play. And I'm like, okay, let me try this one. So I tried. I tried really because I needed money. Was, there's nothing that puts me into that space. At least from when I got introduced to it, you wouldn't really find someone who is... A, a big body, mm -hmm. at least in that space. In, in, yeah. in that space, mostly in South Africa, you can't find someone who labels themselves as fat, mm -hmm. and you also wouldn't find someone who who doesn't have like an average or a huge dick. Mm -hmm. So, nothing really put me in in that space. I just needed money. Why did you remain in that space? If it was just for money, can't you then go back to looking for a job in the inverted commas normal sense? Mm. Or when you look back, do you think that all the pain you went through, there's a bit of holding on to it and that's why you're still in that space? Nah. I don't think there's a link. I don't know. Psychologically, probably, maybe. Mm -hmm. But me personally, I don't think there's a link. It is just... It, it's easy money. Money there is easy, you know? Yeah. Because uh, sex is something you do for free. So if you can get money doing it, just a bonus. Where are you now mentally and do you think you've ever take you've had the opportunity to take steps to heal from the trauma? The multiple traumas that you've gone through. Multiple. Um, I've had a moment to to think, just not so long ago, a few days ago, and I thought, I'm not really giving this much attention as I have, I should have. And I realized, because when I keep on going to the post podcasts, I realized that when I leave, the burden is not as it was before. Okay. So I'm like, so... The talking is helping. Talking is helping. Sure. But... <laughs> it is not as helping as, I, as, as it should. Because I think... When I talk about this, I'm talking as if it is a story probably I heard. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, it, it doesn't really, f even to me, in in most cases, it doesn't feel like something that had happened to me. Um, because it is just a story. I have not reached a point where I attach emotions to the story. Because I I do need to cry. Yeah which is why I love going to church because I get to cry. Mm -hmm. But it is a different story there because I am just thinking about. Mm. I think I still need to cry when I'm talking about it. Mm -hmm. I think that would help. So this is just a realization that I had a few days ago that I really am probably taking this light. And even how it came about, I was on TikTok. I was just telling people my life story. I go to this is where I've been. Uh, I wanted to open a business, and I just wanted to give people a footprint. This is where I've been. This is where I've been, and this is what I've done, and this is what I'm doing now. Because also at that time, I wanted to quit adult content creation. So, you know, people were going to ask. So we hear or we've seen you somewhere, is that not you? So Great. I didn't want people to ask. I just wanted to... To clear the air. Clear the air. So. 
Gandhi, it happens that then people are going it to It opens take, a new chapter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I, I've realized there, There's still that work to be done. There, there's, there's still work to be done. Sure, sure. Yeah. But Musa, um, thank you for sharing your story with us. It is a story, as I'm saying, that has multiple layers of trauma. Traumas that I do not have the capacity to, to, to solve. But I hope this platform, as it is a platform that is about growth, healing, finding perspective, finding your inner power, that this conversation helps you once again, as you're saying, talking helps to reflect on decisions that you have to take that will help you to heal. Mm -hmm. um, I'm grateful that you've, uh, I'm happy as a, as a fellow believer in Christ that you've taken that decision to seek a relationship with God because when we are one with God, we have discernment, we have understanding of what decisions to take and what better things to do. And I hope in everything that you do moving forward, um, you're able to not just operate from a place of only wanting to find healing, but you take your power back and you thrive. And Amen. I really, really believe Amen. that you will. So Amen. thank you so much for coming to Engineer Your Life. And thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope Putmusa's story helps you become a better person and find your own inner power. I'll see you on the next episode. Introducing the epitome of luxury living, Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits.